Hello and welcome to our Coho Data Tech Talk hosted by Tech Field Day. Uh, we're going to be discussing some of the hot topics in technology with a great group of individuals. Uh, joining me today, Mr. Stephen Foskett. Stephen, how are you? Hello, Tom. I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Uh, it's nice to be back here at, on these Tech Talks. It's good to have you back. Uh, joining us today from VMware is uh, Guru Simran Khalsa. GS, how are you? I'm great, Tom. How are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> We're glad to have you on board. And uh, also joining us is Andy Warfield from Coho Data. Andy, how are things in, uh, in Canada today? They're good. They're good in Vancouver. Very good. Awesome. Did, did you hear how he corrected that? Is there some Vancouver versus Canada thing going on? Well, I just thought maybe more specific than all of Canada would be uh, would be useful for all of Canada. Good Is Canada big? No, it's 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 medium size. Sorry. We're humble. <laughs> well, enough about Canada. Let's talk about storage. Uh, one of the things we wanted to talk about today, since we have uh, GS on the call from VMware is we want to talk a little bit about vSAN. It's a little program. I don't know if you guys have heard of it or not. Not very many people talking about it right now. Uh, GS, would you like to go into uh, vSAN a little bit for the people who might be watching? Uh, sure. Um, I, I'll just give everybody kind of a, a brief overview. Um, so vSAN is uh, VMware's entry into the uh, hypervisor or hyperconverged local storage uh, market and basically what uh, vSAN allows you to do is take the storage that's uh, available on your local hosts and combine a few hosts together and use that as a um, kind of a replacement for your typical uh, array. So um, it's I integrated in with the hypervisor and gives you a whole lot more flexibility in the way that you uh, define storage policies, things like that, uh, allows it to be a lot more granularly granularly based on the VM as opposed to um, kind of the, the higher up things that we're used to, like uh, the data store, um, LUN, things like that. So kind of a, a very brief overview of, of what vSAN is. Now, uh, Andy, what are your thoughts on vSAN? I know that uh, Coho has a, an architecture that's similar, but probably not exactly like vSAN. Would you like to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. The um, the, the vSAN stuff is uh, super cool. I guess um, Coho and vSAN um, are kind of uh, highly related um, in terms of in terms of their architectures, and that uh, both architectures are kind of you know inherently scale out. Um, and inherently integrated into the virtualization platform. And so with both things, um, you know, we kind of took the design premise that you should be able to acquire uh, storage incrementally and scale it out and really, really deeply integrate it into, uh, into the way that the VMs and the VMMs are consuming it. And so in vSAN's case, um, you stick disks into your uh, ESX hosts and you run a bit of software inside ESX um, and that presents up a scale out storage platform for you. Uh, in Coho's case, you, uh, you, you, you keep your storage separate still. Um, that's kind of based on a, a really strong belief on our part that, that you want to match up storage performance to the network performance that's serving, and, serving it up and so on and get good utilization, but uh, both things have their merits. Um, but again, with, with Coho, you present up a simple NFS data store and you're getting good network connectivity between that data store and all the different ESX hosts. So one really big distinction between both vSAN and Coho stuff and, and a lot of other storage that's out there is that instead of your storage living at the end of one wire on the network or a small number of wires, uh, you've planned the connectivity to storage out in a way that, that all of your VMs have really rich connectivity into the storage. Very interesting. Um, you talked about Coho and vSAN being relatively new, but both being scale-out architectures. Um, why aren't there more scale-out architectures? Is, is scale-out kind of hard to do? Yeah, um, that's a good question, Tom. Scale-out, um, we've had scale-out for, for a long time, right? There's, there's lots of, uh, of, of older architectures, especially around object storage, uh, where people have built commodity-based servers that, that scale-out Right as you add as you add hosts with disks in them, 
Um, interestingly, though, in a lot of those cases, scale-out has been built for capacity, right, that you really just want to get a lot of cheap storage. And what's happened with both vSAN and, and Coho, these more newer scale-out designs, um, you're actually seeing scale-out being built for performance. Um, SSDs have really changed the, uh, the performance capabilities of storage systems, and SSDs are getting cheap really fast. And so you don't want to buy a big pile of them up front. You want to be able to incorporate them into your environment you know, as you need that performance. And so, uh, so in both the, the vSAN case and the Coho case, right, what you get is the ability to, to put in some SSDs, um, get some good performance off of it, share it across your virtual hosts, and, uh, and then really add them over time as you need to. Um, but it yeah. definitely introduces a bunch of complexity and uh, definitely introduces a bunch of challenges in terms of reliability and availability in the system. Yeah, just in answer to your question too, Tom, I mean, essentially, um, scale-out is the single most difficult problem in storage. Uh, and not just, um, you know, not just because it's hard to lash a whole bunch of things together, but because it's hard to do that in a way that maintains... Uh, you know, performance and compatibility and availability and is, you know, flexible on demand. I mean, there's all sorts of reasons that scale-out has been the, the toughest nut, nut to crack. And, at, well, I'm saying scale-out. Uh, there's a, a, a few different ways that you could scale storage. Um, you know, scale-out is one of the approaches. Um, but none of them have worked all that well, frankly. And so, you know, in order to... Well, in order to do it, you have to do a lot of engineering and uh, a lot of uh, make a lot of changes. And you know, it's interesting to me to see that you know here we've got two technologies that are approaching storage scaling by essentially um, you know changing the game. So instead of trying to um, you know fake out the the same old client in both cases, um, they're figuring out a new twist on scale, and and that's really interesting to me. Um, but of course, there's the other angle too, and that's you know this whole idea of um, increasing the amount of information available to the storage array and so on. And that's you know for me one of the things that's that's really exciting about um, about vSAN as well is not just the fact that it scales, but the fact that it can do more uh, than just um, you know it, it can do more than the storage array itself could do uh, in theory. Of course, it's new. Well, everything was new once, right? I suppose. <laughs> well, uh, one of the other topics that I wanted to discuss a little bit revolves around availability. And specifically for me, it's because I live in Oklahoma and uh, late April through May is storm season. And as many of you probably saw in the news last night, uh, Arkansas got particularly hit hard. Um, how do we address storage availability concerns? Uh, GS, I know specifically that at VMware, availability is, is one of your areas. Um, may, maybe you can talk a little bit about you know, ways that we can keep data alive if, say, the primary data center suddenly doesn't exist because it got swept off of its foundations. Yeah, so uh, when you think about availability, you ha have to think about it in, uh, I like to think about it in three different ways. So you got local availability, so what happens if something, uh, you lose a host, you lose a switch, you lose something like that. Um, kind of what you were talking about with site availability, um, and that, uh, one of the products I work on a lot, uh, SRM, deals with that. And then you have data availability, so, and that's usually your backups, however you're dealing with that. So, I mean, as far as, as SRM goes, or site availability and the, the solutions that we're talking about now, um, vSAN integrates fully with SRM, so it it has that the ability to replicate data using vSphere replication. Um, I'm not exactly sure where Coho Data is in terms of their SRA uh, for integration with SRM, but I know that right now they, they can use vSphere replication um, and replicate data off-site with that and then use SRM to orchestrate that kind of a failover. Yeah, Andy, is it? Now and, and the, the SRA is, uh, is about to be released, actually. So we're oh, excellent. Down that path. Great to hear. Yeah. Now, Andy, how does Coho handle uh, availability between your data stream appliances? 
Well, so there's there's an interesting thing, and I think based on my uh, my understanding of, of vSend that there's actually some interesting commonalities uh, here. Um, but I guess both of these storage things have the, the interesting property that they are storage built by teams that have a strong virtualization background instead of a strong storage background. Um, and so one of the things that storage guys tend to do you know, when they build enterprise storage is, is to start from the bottom in terms of, of abstractions. Right? They, they, they take a whole bunch of disks and they go, okay, crap, we've got to make a, a really big awesome disk out of all of these disks. And so you go and, and dig around in your bag and you pull out something like RAID um, or some other kind of coding scheme. And you progressively work your way up through richer and richer abstractions, adding a file system, a volume manager below it, and, and stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, when you face failure, right in the especially local case, like uh, like GS is mentioning, uh, you end up having to do volume rebuilds, right? You because you've done um, reliability at the bottommost layer of the system for redundancy down there, you have to scan all of the media um, to do recovery. And and this is one of the specific reasons that that enterprise storage systems don't tend to use really really large drives, right? It's that that doing a recovery on a drive that is six terabytes um, takes so long that you're quite likely to take a failure on one of your other drives while you're in the middle of doing a rebuild. Um, and so in, in the systems that certainly Coho has built, and I, I think there's a flavor of this inside vSAN as well, um, we, we, we do all of that redundancy um, at the level of the objects that are being stored. right? So instead of, of building on top of some kind of you know, fancy abstract combination of disks, we instead say, for this object, for this VMDK you want to store, what's the policy that you want to store with? Do you want two replicas or four replicas, right? Do you want it erasure coded? Do you, you know, how do you want it striped out across the, uh, the systems that it's stored on in order to balance load and get performance? And we actually build that into a dispatch layer that sits at the top of the whole system. And so with the scale-out system, as you're writing down onto multiple physical hosts, whether they're Coho nodes or ESX hosts or whatever, um, you're making a decision to do placement at that level, right? Your your replication, whether it's synchronous or asynchronous, is actually happening on or near the object write path, and so that means when a node fails, you do the recovery of just the object data, and you can use all of the nodes that that have backup copies of that to do the recovery, and so recovery itself scales out, right? Which is uh, which is a really really like exciting property of the storage system that, that as you scale out, you actually become more resilient and, and faster to recover. Interesting. Stephen, what are your thoughts on, on scaling out and availability with storage? Yeah, um, I, I think that as Andy points out, um, and that would be ideal with any kind of a scale out system that as you add more nodes, you actually are increasing avail uh, reliability and not um, you know, not not decreasing it, and I think that that's one of those design goals that a lot of people have, but is also very very difficult to uh, attain, since um, unfortunately, as you also get bigger, there's also the the all your eggs in one basket problem, and that's something that I've heard in reference to a lot of these solutions, um, where people will say, "This sounds like a great idea, but you know, if I'm putting all of my bag, you know, more and more eggs into the same virtual storage basket." Uh, I run more risk if the thing should fail. Uh, the answer has always been, well, it's a better basket, you know, so you can either put it in, you know, you can put each egg individually in a little flimsy uh, plastic bag, or you can put everything in a nice big styrofoam, you know, insulated thing. And, and so, you know, the idea would be that, that you know, by, by consolidating, yes, you are creating an eggs in one basket problem, but if the basket is better, then it's better. And, and as Andy's saying, too, you also have a new opportunity as you add more and more nodes. I'm going to skip the eggs uh, analogy for now. Um, <laughs> as you add more and more storage nodes, you do have an opportunity to um, to add uh, additional uh, features in terms of of data placement. So, for example, um, you know you can as as your system scales out, you can place data on more and more nodes. Now, that's difficult to do with a traditional RAID system, but it's actually um, fairly straightforward and, and probably the right approach to do with any kind of a, 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 a advanced you know post raid data placement uh, model like he was talking about with objects. Um, that's certainly what cloud storage systems do when they have object stores. They um, you know push objects out to many many nodes, 
and what you end up with is a system that's much more reliable and uh, than anything you could have built um, individually. And so while it's true that you know, like Amazon S3 is the world's biggest egg basket, it's also true that it's um, you know proven to be one of the world's most reliable egg baskets. Um, you know, we, they really haven't had as many outages as somebody might think, considering just how big that yep. thing is. Okay. You, went, you and, went back to the egg sack. Yeah, I went back. I'm sorry. About <laughs> the egg. It's, you know, it, it, it's a, a holiday thing. Um, but yeah, you, you know, and, and you look at these systems too. These are not Amazon S3. Um, nobody's suggesting that either of these solutions is going to get, you know, well, maybe these guys might, but no regular person is suggesting that these things are going to get, you know, exabyte scale, right? I mean, at least not now. Um, We're all happy to talk to the customer that wants it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, you know, I mean, you've, you've got systems where, um, you know, in the, in the case of vSAN, you know, the magic really is in the data placement. And, you know, how is data distributed in an intelligent way across multiple, uh, multiple nodes? And honestly, that's the same thing that you've got with the Coho solution and with other scale-out solutions. You know, how do you make intelligent decisions about where to place the data? And that leads me back to this idea of um, sort of host-side integration and how do you figure out, how do you get information from the host on where data should be placed? Um, you know, because you want to keep data consistent and you want to keep it, uh, you want to intelligently put it where it should be. Um, you know, vSAN has the advantage of being integrated into the hypervisor, so the hypervisor, you know, knows where data is and what data is. Whereas, um, you know, with the with the Coho solution, um, it's more difficult to get that information without having, you know, an integration uh, an integration point, a special integration point, with VMware. Interesting. So, <laughs> do you want to do you want to answer that? Uh, how, how do you get that information? Wait, so I, I missed the, the last little bit of what yeah. you said. How do we get so, the information on what VMs or? Yeah, exactly. How do you know what data is what and where to put it? Well, so this is one of the nice things in terms of, uh, of taking advantage of the, uh, the NFS data store, um, that, that at least by presenting up um, NFS uh, into VMware, uh, we do get object granularity access to the VMDKs and to the directories containing them on a per VM basis. Right, so Coho integrates both against the uh, the, the vSphere APIs to, uh, uh, to to track provisioning and so on. We um, we provide a VAAI plugin to uh, to make sure that we expose fast clones and so on. And by mapping down onto objects on NFS, uh, we have a lot of visibility into what the individual files that are being stored are. Right, so we can set per VMDK, per VM policy. Um, on all of the um, all of the bits of storage that are being stored in there, um, the downside of using NFS initially was the fact that NFS sits behind a single IP address, um, and so you're stuck, you know, terminating in on on one point at the end of a wire, um, and that's the thing that that by integrating with SDN we've been able to solve, right? We've been able to um, to make that IP address scale out over huge yeah. numbers of ports on on 10 gig networks. Yeah, um, that's the real benefit of NFS, right? Is that it's um, it's actually telling the storage array, you know, hey, this is a file, this is a consistent data set, it, unlike a block storage solution where essentially you just have a big pile yeah. of blocks. Yeah, yeah. Now going back to the other thing you're saying about placement, you know, one thing that I think is uh, is really exciting about about this new class of storage systems that are that are doing smart things there um, is the fact that just like uh, the initial movement to virtualization on the x86, right, and then building clusters of virtual machines and adding things like live migration meant that you really, really decoupled uh, the, the physical administration of your hardware uh, from the VMs that were running on top of it. That, that in, the, in the VM situation meant that you could go and buy servers and replace dead servers kind of arbitrarily, right, and the, and the great work that VMware did with, uh, with HA where you know a power supply dies on a server, and you have some policy that that you know brings that VM up on a live node somewhere, right, and, and gives you some really intuitive and straightforward ways of of setting the criteria for failure. Well, with these storage systems, you suddenly get the same thing, right? You suddenly have the ability to um, migrate data around to take scale out nodes out of service at the end of their life without having to do a huge um, migration of data from one array to another, right? So we're starting to see storage systems that that are much more capable of being long running and staying available 
right on a on a single sort of continuous platform uh, than we've had with enterprise storage ever before. All right. Uh, one last topic that I'd like to uh, bring up with the panel here is about some of the trends that you're seeing in storage. Um, GS, a couple things about VMware and their approach to the release of vSAN. I know that it was an open beta, which was really kind of an interesting idea when you think about the, the size of, of what they were trying to do. But also, thanks to that open beta, are you guys seeing a lot more of uh, a lot more interest from people in the in vSAN? Yeah, we definitely are. Um, I, I really, I really like the fact that VMware made that an open beta and, and got more people involved earlier. Um, I, we were able to use people to help uh, determine features to some extent, functionality. Um, you know, act. I mean, they're called beta testers for a reason. It's we we were able to use them to find issues with the product and uh, refine some things. So all that's resulted in in a really really impressive pickup. Um, had a lot of interest and and it just it, it keeps going. So we're we're really happy with it. Steve, yeah, I'd like to yeah I'd like to echo that too. Uh, you know, it was really nice that VMware made this uh, public beta. Um, you know that's that's a risky thing to do because of course people can find um, I mean it's beta right and people can find bugs and honestly beta storage is a pretty horrifying <laughs> thing to anyone in the storage industry yeah. Um, yeah when we say beta we mean don't put your data there your critical data you know use it in a lab use it in a test I mean um, it's it's a pretty terrifying prospect and um, you know VMware went out there and, and let us poke at it and let us try it. And, you know, without um, seeming too snarky or naming too many names, that same can't be said for every VMware storage-related announcement. So I really appreciate the fact that this one is available and, you know, people like me can try it and, and see what it's all about. Um, you know, it, and, and frankly, there's been a lot of positive comments about it. A lot of people have done some, some really, really great work. I've been, you know, reading the blogs and, um, yeah, I mean, honestly, just Google, um, I don't know, V vSAN storage blog or something, and I bet you'll find a lot of people who've tried this thing out, and um, you know, yeah, they found some problems with it, but they're pretty enthusiastic about where it's going, and um, you know, that's that's a really great move for VMware instead of um, you know announcing it and then waiting until it's GA before letting anybody get their hands on it, because um, unfortunately, that's something that's been uh, in the way of a lot of previous uh, VMware announcements. Totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I hope I, I know that uh, GS knows exactly what I'm talking about here. Yeah, so thank you, yeah, Andy. What kind of trends are you seeing from uh, your perspective over at Coho? Uh, any interesting things that are being talked about? Yeah, there's there's lots of uh, lots of crazy stuff uh, going on at, uh, at Coho right now in terms of uh, in terms of next steps. Um, you know, one of the things that's been pretty interesting over the past few weeks is. Um, yeah, we really, I've talked about this in, in talks lots of times before, but we really put a lot of work into, um, into being able to expose the, the performance that you get off these new flash devices, right? That, that PCIe flash in particular turns out to be insanely demanding. And, uh, and to be able to serve it up as storage, right, to, to actually get the dollar per IOP numbers that, that people advertise, um, you need to be able to drive a lot of work to it. And it's often the case that even a single you know, host with a pile of virtual machines that are I/O intensive can't actually drive enough I/O to saturate the card, right? And so, you know, one of the real, you know, guiding principles behind Co's design is that, you know, by using the switch and by building this as a separate tier and matching CPU to it, that you get really good value, uh, value for performance, especially out of your storage. Um, and so, about three weeks ago, um, one of the flash vendors shipped us the next generation of their PCIe flash cards. Um, so we started working with the uh, with the sort of alpha hardware uh, for the next gen PCIe flash, and uh, and it's is almost exactly uh, twice the capacity and twice the performance of the stuff that we uh, that we ship in product today, and so uh, everybody is is very stressed out <laughs> because it turns out to be twice as hard to drive this stuff at line rate, right in the uh, in the hardware that we have. So we're back to you know, um, you know, running the system through uh, 
through a whole bunch of cache analysis and and piles of, of processor level optimization work to uh, to just expose the performance that we're getting off this uh, off this flash hardware. Um, so that's that's one thing that's pretty interesting lately. Um, I guess I guess one of the other really significant things that uh, that that's taking up a lot of uh, uh, a lot of my time on the, the engineering side and, and the team's time right now is that this this disparity between the performance in um, in disk on one hand and flash on the other um, ends up getting broader and broader every year, right? And and it's going to still be uh, a number of years before we see flash that is price competitive with disk, right? That that disk today at eight cents a gig um, with you know comparable enterprise SATA flash the low end of that being around eighty cents a gig, right? It's 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 not going to make sense economically to build a, an all flash storage system for probably about another half decade, um, and so building a hybrid system, right? Like you know a lot of these systems do certainly like we do, um, makes a lot of sense. You you want to have your, your cold capacity on disk uh, and all your active stuff on flash. But managing that handoff between disk and flash where a single flash device can do you know, 300,000 IOPS, right, and a disk can do 100 is, is a really, really challenging you know, performance mismatch. And so we've actually been doing a, a huge amount of work, and I think that this is going to be a, a broader trend in, in storage system design. To, to do analytics on the workflows um, and both you know, do really smart automatic things in terms of moving data between flash and disk and also explaining, and this is the kind of, I think, really important part, uh, explaining to the, to the administrator, to the user, whether they have enough flash, right? whether the system is suffering on performance because you know, their workload is problematic or because they could you know, potentially spend more money to, to grow a tier. And so that bit of technical work is, is super challenging and, and I think one that's going to be pretty exciting over the next couple of years. Well, I think if uh, anybody can solve those technical challenges, it's you, Andy. I've, I've heard a lot of great things out of you, uh, most recently at the uh, Software Defined Data Center Symposium. Oh, sh shucks. <laughs> shucks. Don't tell him that, Tom. He'll get a big <laughs> head. <laughs> okay. Well, I think... Uh, I'm, always, I'm always saying good things about him and now look at him. <laughs> I, uh, I think that'll just about wrap it up for this week's Tech Talk. Um, GS, if people want to learn more about VMware and specifically about some of the solutions that you work on, uh, is there any place on the web that they can head over to to read up on it? Yeah, so the, the vSphere blogs um, is a great place for everything vSphere related. There's uh, a category within that related to storage and one related to availability. So. Um, I don't actually know the URLs off the top of my head, but if you do a search for vSphere blog, it'll you'll you'll turn it up pretty quick. So Google is your friend. Yes, um, Andy. Uh, hey, look, oh, yes, was promising uh, all sorts of uh, exciting announcements that are that are just about to be made. So uh, so we'll look forward to those as well. I like to, I, exciting announcements all the time, Andy. If people want to learn more about Coho Data Solutions and uh, your products, where should they go? Uh, we're at cohodata.com, so uh, that's uh, that's hopefully an easy one to, to remember. Very good. Now, Stephen, if people want to learn all about storage, is is there anybody out there telling the truth about storage? Maybe, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tom, Curtis is going to be so glad that you just said that. No, yeah. So um, you can find me at s Foskett on Twitter. Uh, you can just Google Stephen Foskett. I'm probably the only one with any kind of presence, and um, and then I also do a. Uh, seminar series uh, where I talk about, and this is the title of the series, thus Tom's question, the truth about storage. So if you go to those events, you can actually um, hear me talk for a whole day, and um, and won't that be nice? So uh, uh, com coming soon to a city near you. Thanks, Tom. No problem. And uh, I'm Tom Hollingsworth for Tech Field Day. And if you'd like to head over to our website, techfieldday.com, we've just put up a whole bunch of videos from our recent storage field day number five. Uh, there's a lot of great content out there that you guys would probably find very, very interesting. Um, that should keep you busy until our next Coho Data Tech Talk, where uh, Andy and Steven and some more guests will be joining us to talk about the hot new topics in storage. Until then, thank you all for watching today, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.